Welcome back, Colorado. It's time for us to continue our year one season simulation with your Colorado Avalanche. And we already got a good chunk of the season simulated. I didn't want to waste any time in year number one. We're 60 games in. We are at the uh, the trade deadline. It was an interesting year, man. I showed you guys the options, options A, B, and C. I read your comments. Uh, we were never all going to agree on something, but I think for the majority, people agreed that option A, trying to win right now with this roster, just was not going to work. But you know, our simulation it indicated otherwise. At the end of December, we were well ahead of 500, or above 500, I should say. And we were looking like we were going to make the playoffs, and I just didn't know what the hell was going on. But then the law of averages caught up to us. This team is not a good team. And finally, the coincidental simulation didn't go in our favor. I mean, January was horrible. Look at this. Shootout loss, 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 loss. Loss, loss, overtime loss, 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 win. So January just killed us, and February has been more of the same. Loss, loss, win, loss, win, loss, 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 overtime loss, loss, loss. So the playoffs are officially gone in year number one, boys. Our record right now at the trade deadline, 25, 28, and 7. Uh, with 28 regulation losses and 7 overtime losses, you basically have to win every single game remaining in the season, and you may still miss out on the playoffs if it's a strong division and a strong conference, right? So I think the top priority right now is to tank boys uh, options a options B option C all of them are the same right now we can't win in this year you might as well try to uh, have the worst season that you can so that we don't end up in that tweener position I want a top five pick so let's take a look at where we are in the standings I got a lot of trades to make here we have to unload the team got to bring up some AHL players but I don't want to just make trades just for the sake of making them I want to get the right value back okay so let's do this nice and slow I've already done some pre-scouting first we'll take a look at where we sit in the standings uh one two three four five six seven eight if the nhl season were to end right now and there was no lottery for the nhl entry draft we would be picking at eighth overall that is not good enough simply put that is not good enough i want to I want to finish in the bottom, I'd love to finish in the bottom three, that way you have a great chance at the uh, the top three in picks. Uh, I'll settle for a bottom five finish, but I mean the bottom five finish you could be pushed up to seven or eight or however it works, right? So with 57 points right now, 56, 55, 55, 52, 49, 49, I don't know if we'll be able to, uh, I'm saying catch these teams, it's not that we're catching them, I don't know if they're going to be able to catch us, uh, but I think that we can... We can finish fourth worst overall. So if I'm looking at this, how many points we got? 57. 22 games remaining, 57 points. Okay, I don't want more than 13 points. Okay, we want to stay below 70 points. If we can stay below 70 points on the season, I think that we'll be in the bottom bottom three or four. Okay, so that's the magical number that I'm setting for the team. 70 points, boys. We do not want to go above 70 points. Now, let me just quickly take a look at the, uh, the lines because I have some explaining to do with the upcoming uh, coming trades I would like to make. So if we're going to try to tank the season, right, we got to unload players that are improving our simulation, but we we don't want to hurt the future. A guy like Nathan McKinnon, if I unload a guy like uh, Landeskog and Duchesne, he's going to have a horrible end to the year. I want this guy to continue to get points. So I think Gabriel Landeskog has got to stay until the draft. The second reason for Landy staying is he's 87 overall. Anyone who's played GM mode knows that the magical number for trade value, 86, 87, 88, the difference in trade value between these three numbers is massive. So if we see Landy jump from 87 to 88, by the NHL entry draft, the trade value is that much better, okay? McKinnon's already at 88. He's not going anywhere. Jerome McGinley, we might be able to get a third round pick. I might even have to retain salary for him. You might be able to get a third round pick. But again, you're trading him just so that you tank. Matt Duchesne is the one, though. I would like to unload Matt Duchesne right now at the trade deadline and not at the NHL entry draft. This guy's got uh, two and a half years left on his deal. He can help a team win right now. And also, by trading him away, we will uh, certainly hurt our simulation odds for the remainder of the season. The only problem is that Sebastian Aho and Rantanen won't have that center to play alongside of, but uh, what are you going to do, right? So uh, Jerome's got to go. Duchesne's got to go. Colburn, if I can find the right team for, he can go. Defensively, Okay, so Eric Johnson, the same idea I had with Landeskog, the overall 86, 87, 88. He might, he might jump to an 87 by the end of the year. He may not, but if he does, that's extra trade value that the Colorado Avalanche would, uh, would benefit from in a big way. Tyson Berry, look, he already grew to 87. The difference is Johnson's 20. I don't know if he's going to grow. But you know what? Holding on to these two guys is not going to... 
be a powerhouse for our simulation, you know? I mean, we're going to have a shitty... T I could trade away Weirkoch, I could trade away Francois Boschman if I could find a contender. And then what I could also do is uh, the penalty kill. I could just put a bunch of AHL players and, and hacks on here. It's not like McKinnon or Landeskog are killing penalties, so it's not like they're going to lose ice time. Okay, so that's the plan, boys. We're going to go with uh, Duchesne gone, Jerome Ginla gone, Colburn, Weirkoch gone. We got four players we want to trade right now. The rest we are going to save for the NHL entry draft. I envision, let's say we, with our with our pick this year, we, we're picking at number four, number three overall. We could then take Landis Gog and trade for the fifth or sixth overall pick, you know? I want to trade Landis Gog for a guarantee. I don't want to trade him for a first round pick that we're hoping ends up being a top ten. We don't want that. I want a guarantee. And so, if we're talking about guarantees, if we're talking about option C, the accelerated rebuild, and that's what I'm going to do right here, boys. Uh, I know a lot of people thought the full-on rebuild was the was the right way to go, but I like Nathan McKinnon. We just got to find the right winger to play alongside of him. Now, I suggested Nikita Kucherov, Philip Forsberg, Andre Burakovsky. Not bad players, but I did some more pre-scouting, and something popped out at me that made all the sense in the world. Now, before you go crazy with your comments, allow me to explain why I think this trade makes the sense in the world okay first from the Colorado Avalanche perspective I'll go to the team and I'll show you the player all right first it's the Eastern Conference so we're trading a stud Matt Duchesne to the east it's going to be the Tampa Bay Lightning in exchange for Nathan McKinnon's winger teammate on the Halifax Mooseheads Jonathan Druin boys it's absolutely perfect Druin and Matt uh, not Matthews Druin and uh McKinnon played together in junior the year before they were drafted that I think it was 2012, 2013, McKinnon had 32 goals, 43 assists, 75 points in 44 games played. Jonathan Druin, 41 goals, 64 assists for 105 points in 49 games played. These guys tore up the QMJHL together. And what did I say? We want to find that sniper to play alongside of, uh, of, uh, of uh, McKinnon. I'm keeping on saying Matthews. McKinnon, for the rest of his career, boom, right here. Now, his trade value is way up there, right? But this is what uh, option C was all about. You want to find that winger. You want to find that defenseman. Everything else is about prospects and picks. But you take a chance on two guys who are already NHL ready so that they can uh, help out Nathan McKinnon. So I'll put Jonathan Drew in, in here. And the guy going back is going to be Matt Duchesne. Now here's where I have to explain it to you guys. Because I can already hear it in the comment section. What the hell? The Tampa Bay Lightning wouldn't want Matt Duchesne for Jonathan Drew in. They already have plenty of centers. Alright, so listen here. Um... Obviously, the uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning are a team trying to win the Stanley Cup right now. But because they signed Steven Stamkos to that eight-year extension, there's it's almost like there's two stages to this Tampa Bay Lightning squad. The immediate roster that's trying to win the Stanley Cup and the future. And in the future, they're not going to be able to hold on to all these guys. You guys have played GM modes. You know in year one, they always lose someone to free agency. It's either Druin, Tyler Johnson, Palat, Ben Bishop, there's another guy in there, okay? Because Druin wants more than five mil at this kind of overall. Uh, Johnson wants more than five and a half mil. Palat wants more than five and a half mil. There's no way they can bring them all back. What Matt Duchesne does for this team is it ensures a future second line center in the Steven Stamkos era. If Johnson drops, okay, he's gone. If Philpula gets too old, remember what I said, the two term system for Tampa Bay, immediately Johnson and Philpula are fine. But three, four years from now, Johnson may go to free agency. Phil people may drop off who do they have as a second line center then for Stamkos in his prime for another six years well they could have Matt Duchesne and in the meantime he could play the wing now also hang on a second here hang on uh let me just yeah yeah, yeah. also the financial benefit for this we are we are a rebuilding team we're not going to be a cap team so how I can help the Tampa Bay Lightning sweeten this deal for them is I can retain 50 percent of Matt Duchesne's salary what this does, it allows options for the Tampa Bay Lightning to keep Johnson and Palat. There was no way in hell they were going to keep Drew in Johnson and Palat, but with Duchesne only costing them $3 million per season for another two years after this year, you may not get Drew in Johnson Palat, but you can get Johnson Palat Duchesne. They can let Bishop go to free agency, and they can keep their forward core together. Again, let me show you guys the big uh, the big value with Duchesne. You're not thinking that the Tampa Bay Lightning would want him until it's Duchesne 
in for another two years after this year at three million per season. If we look at his at the Tampa Bay Lightning forwards, all right, Stamkos at seven point eight, Callahan five point three, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, eight. That means that Mac Duchesne is the eighth most expensive forward on the Tampa Bay Lightning. So that Duchesne will help out their immediate team right now. And when Filipula goes, and if they don't decide to sign Tyler Johnson, they can re-sign Duchesne as the second line center of the future. Okay, boys. So if you don't think that's a good trade, I don't know. I, I tried to explain it the best way I could. Duchesne for another three years at three million for a Stanley Cup contender. That's fantastic. Now the trade value is in uh, our favor a little bit so let me see if i can get a draft pick here uh draft picks let me try to get a third round pick in there see i said for duchene i'd get a uh, grade a plus prospect and a first but the thing about drew he's not a prospect he's a bona fide winger he's he's going to be a stud he's above prospect so you're not going to get that first back for him propose will you get the third you won't even get the third. All right, let me just try. Matt Duchesne, 50% retained salary for Jonathan Drouin. Straight up. Will it go through? Yes, it did. Barely went through. They did not want to part ways with Jonathan Drouin. On behalf of the Tampa Bay Lightning organization, I accept your trade offer. We'll see you out on the ice. So, boys, there it is. Wow. Option C, acquiring the winger that can play alongside of Nathan McKinnon for the future. For right now, it has been acquired. Jonathan Drouin. Okay, very nice. Now, uh, let me back out of this. We'll go. Oh, I'll go best lines. I'll fix all that stuff later. Okay, so Tyson Berry's beginning morale becoming an alternate captain. Fantastic. So let's take a look at the uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning forward core now, boys. All right, so I mean, go nuts in the comment section. If you think it wasn't a good trade, go. Uh, that's fine. But uh, I don't see the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning wanting to turn down a guy like Matt Duchesne on that kind of contract. Look at that contract for Matt Duchesne now. Okay, three years at put three million dollars. I mean, with Kucherov, you got Kucherov and Duchesne for seven point three for another three years. That's that's fantastic, man. So they're trying to win a Stanley Cup right now. We already know how good they simulate, um, and they have their second line center of the future if Tyler Johnson goes somewhere. Filippo's getting too old, so there it is, boys. All right, so that will hurt our simulation. Next, we have to trade away Jerome Ginla. Give me some time. Um, I want to find the best team. I'll probably just get like a second or something for him. Yeah, I mean, look at that trade value. It's not that much. So give me some time. I won't waste your. Uh, don't waste your time. I'm saying the word time too much. Hang on. Okay, boys. So I found a, a team that wants Jerome. We have the Nashville Predators for Jerome Aginla. I'm going to acquire a third. And this guy, after all, he's nobody. He's 67 overall. Play him on the NHL squad. Now, I may, I'm probably going to have to retain salary for Jerome. Let's see. Oh, no, I'm not. Wow. Jerome Aginla at 5.3. Accepted by the Nashville Predators. All right. Gabriel Landeskog has lost morale. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm losing morale like crazy. Deal with it, boys. It's time for the tank. The tank is real. Uh, best lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so who else do I want to trade away? It was Joe Colburn, Patrick Weirkoch, correct? Let me just go through this step by step. I'm going to sort by overall. All right, so McKinnon. Yeah, these guys are garbage. Straight garbage, straight garbage. So we're fine there. Left wing. Okay, Sebastian Aho, Gabriel Landeskog, Joe Colburn. I mean, he's barely got any kind of trade value. Two years left at 2.5. No, you know what? We got we to gotta unload. It, it, it. It could be it could be a matter of one or two or three points that that puts us in the bottom three. I need to freaking go on a pure tank here. Yeah, so Colburn's got to go. There you go, Colburn. You're out. Uh, you know what? I'll just go Colburn by himself. We'll find a team. Give me a second here. Okay, so I found a team that uh, is not exactly interested in Joe Colburn. There was no teams that were interested in him, but uh, I'm just gonna give him to a team that is yeah their status is champion. So playoff bound at least some depth. So uh, Luff and a third. I don't even know if I'll get the third back for this. Uh, you are quite far off. Ooh, I might just have to settle for a fourth. Remember, though, this is not a trade for value. This is a trade for tank. Let me try the uh, seventh and the sixth. Is that third? Yeah, I, I take the third. No, okay. Gonna have to settle for the fourth, boys. This is why I was kind of contemplating holding on to Joel Colburn for next year. Wouldn't be a bad debt player for ourselves, but we could find replacements in free agency. We just... The tank. The tank. The tank is our priority right now. Fourth. Based on the, ooh, they don't even want to take Joel Colburn. Okay, so the money that I saved in retaining, uh, what's his name, Jerome Aginla, I can now send out for Joel Colburn. He's got two years left. Don't worry, we're not going to be a salary cap team. In fact, I'm going to have to sign free agents to hit the minimum salary more than likely. So uh, this is just fine. Yep, sweet. It seems like a sweet proposal. Okay, so goodbye, Joel Colburn. Uh, Tyson Berry, everyone's losing morale. Hopefully, you know, I should keep an eye on that. Tootin. Yeah, because if anyone's morale drops, then I won't be able to trade them away. We don't need that happening. Uh, best lines, yeah. So we want to get Weirkoch gone now. I don't think I'll be able to get rid of Boshman at all. He's got, like, no trade value, I bet. Like, I could just I could just sit him. That's the thing. I don't have to find a team for him. Hang on, forwards. 
Let me go through this one more time. Centers. Let me just sort by overall. All right. So, yeah, only McKinnon. Uh, Landis Cog, Aho. I mean, 81, I can just sit them, and they're playing in the AHL anyway. Uh, Drew in, a Grigorenko down there in the AHL. Uh, Rantanen, Blake Como. I mean, he's already in the AHL. Yep. And then defenseman, yeah, Weirkoch. And Weirkoch actually has some value there. So why not? And so does Jelena. You know, I'm going to trade away Jelena also. Yeah, I'm going to trade away Jelena. Uh, Bosch. Oh, Boschman's got some value. I already have... I already used two of my retained salaries. Okay, let me... Let me... Oh, man. Let me go Weirkoch and... Yeah, uh, ooh, Weirkoch and Boschman. You know, I'll go Weirkoch and Boschman, and then Jelena can be uh, by himself, because Weirkoch is like a minor league deal or something. Yeah, 0 .8, 0 .8 million. So, Boschman. So, let's try to find a team here. I, I don't want to waste your time, but... Yeah, the Columbus Blue Jackets, they want them both. Okay, so, uh, retain salary for Boschman. There you go. We'll jack that number up there. Let's see what the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets have. This is this is just picks. I just want picks for this now. I don't want any prospects. All right, so Columbus, they probably have... I'm probably going to have to take two players back. Let me see, just draft picks. They want to give up their picks. Yes, they do. All right, let me try to take a second from that. Yeah, I think I can get a second, but they have too many players in their organization, so I'm going to have to take some back. Hang on a sec. All skaters. The game could keep up with my movements. Uh, here we go. Kukan. I want to get the guys who they're willing to give away. That way their uh, value is cheaper. Yeah, these two guys right here. Uh, you and you. And they can even play in the NHL squad. Okay, there it is. So Columbus is second in this year. Uh, Hannah Kynan and Kukin for Patrick Weirkoch and Francois Boschman. Yeah, the second... The second will be nice for those two guys. Hell yeah. Let's see. Will it go through? Okay. So, that didn't work. I'm, that's interesting that that didn't work. It was all greens and all reds. Let me try... I mean, I could just settle for the third. I want to get as many seconds as I can this year because those are the trading chips. If I want to move up at the uh, at the draft, the seconds and thirds will do it. I still want to draft in the second and third round, but that's why I'm, I'm loading up on them. I only need like two or three to actually draft with. Anything more can be used. Uh, fifth? No. Okay, so we're not getting the second round pick from the Columbus Blue Jackets here that's fine we will settle for a third this year a third next year and i'll try to get the fourth okay so there it is three picks for weird Koch and boschman will it go through a new no. all right let me just try the two thirds will it go through there it is okay so we got weird Koch and boschman out of here for two third round picks one this year one next year remember we wanted to have two good uh drafting years and then year three option c we would uh, be ready to go with still some young players coming up. Uh, okay, let me just, yeah, I'll go best lines here. I still have to make some roster moves to make sure our team is god-awful. Nathan McKinnon has become an alternate captain. Uh, all right, so let me just go through this one more time, boys. Let's go all skaters, sure. Here we go. All right, so McKinnon, Landis Gug, Barry, uh, Johnson, Druin, Rantanen, Grigorenko, Aho, Bigris, uh, Zadorov, and a bunch of 81s. We're not going to worry about, oh, Jelena, Jelena, Jelena. He was the one. Because he's got some value right now. And you know what? I could find a team that might want him and just get another pick. Oh, there's no team want him. You know what? No team want... You know, I'm going to hold on to Jelena. I'm going to hold on to Jelena. He's got top four. He may jump to like an 82, 83. And that would help that trade value out even more. Okay? So, boys, there are the trades. We are looking tank. We've made the team that much worse. Goodbye, Weirkoch. Goodbye, Aginla. Uh, goodbye, uh, Matt Duchesne. Goodbye, Boshaman. Woo, this is going to be a rough finish to the season, boys. But that first line, Druin, McKinnon, and Landeskog, not too bad. Well, man, Aho and Rantanen, they're not going to have a good finish to this season at all. But whatever, man. Can't put them down there in the AHL's third line scoring forwards. Got to put them on the second and hope they can do something. So let me go to roster moves. Let me, you know what, I'll do everything. Just give me a second, I'll roster move it, I'll edit the lines. I'd like to simulate to the draft so we can figure out our lottery position in this video. So let's do that. Alright boys, here's the new look, Colorado Avalanche. Oh my god, that bottom six is horrible. 69, 67, 68, 63, 58, and no, 59. Oh, the tank is real here in Colorado. Now hopefully the first line can continue to get points. Landy, McKinnon, and Drew in, but you know what, with a team this bad, you're probably 
probably going to be seeing a lot of games where we lose three to nothing, four to one. It'll be a miracle if we get two goals in a game. So uh, their point production's probably going to drop off. But like I said, the top priority right now is to tank the season. We got Eric Johnson, Tyson Berry, Jelena, but then my other three defensemen, 66, 67, 61. So I'm really, <laughs> really trying to tank uh, special teams. If we uh, the power play is the same because I want these guys to continue to get points. But uh, penalty kill every player. If I had a fourth defenseman, it would be shit as well but every player is 60 or worse or no 60, 60 69 or worse that's it yeah less than 70 i'll just say that so the penalty kill is absolutely garbage and so is the three-man penalty kill so boys that's that oh you know what there was one thing uh, yeah, yeah yeah when i was editing the lines i forgot to actually show you the stats of jonathan drew in um what he's done over the course of this year i was just talking about uh the duchene and uh, drew in an argument for why the trade should go through because I know that you guys are going to be livid at that. We have a lot of non believers, but here is his individual stats. Looks like this, and so far this season 23 goals, 21 assists. So, this guy is that sniper that uh, that I'm looking for. Oh my god, shooting percentage of 15.2. If he gets like 200 shots, that's a lot, man. That's a lot. I mean, he's, he's a goal scorer. And if you take a look at uh, Gabriel Landeskog, right? How many goals does he have? 14. So you can see the difference. Drew in is, is clearly the goal scorer that needs to be alongside of uh, of uh, Nathan McKinnon. Now, I mean, if you're if, if we had the time and we had more assets, Landeskog, McKinnon, and Drew in would be a real nice line of the future. should be interesting to see how these guys simulate. Um, you know what I'll do? There's no way I'll remember all the numbers, but I'll just bring up the individual stats one more time. If somebody could track it for me in the comment section, just so other people can see, uh, let us all know by the time the end of the season happens, what the point differential or the, the, the point totals are for McKinnon, Landeskog, and Druin. So basically, since the trade happened, how many more goals, assists, and points did each one of these three players have? Don't worry about Rantanen or Aho. Uh, Druin, 23, uh, McKinnon, 22, and Landeskog, 14, 54 points, 46, 44. I'll try to remember that. There's no way in hell. I've already forgot it. How many points did uh, Drew in have again? 77? <laughs> So here we go, boys. Year one, the moves have been made. Simeon Varlamov is gone. All the uh, older veterans, Soderberg, uh, Jerome Aginla, they're gone. We only have a few more assets that we're willing to trade, but that's going to have to wait until the draft, okay? Landis Gog, Tyson Berry, and uh, Eric Johnson. But the good news is that we acquired that uh, we acquired that future winger to play alongside of Nathan McKinnon and to perform right now. So what we want to do is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's go to the last... 10 games, yeah, against that St. Louis Blues squad, and then, yeah, 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 because St. Louis, yeah, we'll end it right there, and we'll have a countdown from the last 10 games to see where we sit. Now, what did I say? I wanted, uh, oh, and I also upped the injuries, right? There might be, yeah, there might be actually in injuries now. Uh, assistant coach replaces player, there you go. Uh, trade deadline, yeah. I was going to say, we want to be below 70 points, right? So, oh my god, we start off with a 3-1 win with this new squad, a 3-1 victory over the uh, Philadelphia Flyers. We want to be below, uh, yeah, I'll just continue, whatever. Sam Henley, I don't think, ah, no, it's the AHL squad, I have to do it. It's the AHL squad, I might have to put in some more, where, where, where was he, a center? Henley, it wasn't a name that, uh, yeah, it was just, he's 69, fuck that! I'll leave uh, Elson in there at, at 71, hell yeah. All right, so I want to 26, 29, and 7. I'd love to have a regulation loss column at at least 40. There you go. There's two in a row. Three in a row. 6-2 loss. 4 nothing loss. 6 nothing. 4 in a row. There you go, boys. The tank is real. How the hell did we manage to beat Philadelphia and New Jersey? They straight, they straight suck. Uh, the Ottawa Senators, come on, start losing. Start losing. We don't want to get to 70 points. Uh, we're, I mean, we're almost there already. Right? We need to go on an extended losing streak. Come on. Before the last 10. There you go. There's two in a row. No overtime losses. Detroit. And they're a bottom-feeding team. Come on. Beat us. Beat us, Detroit. The rivalry is old. has been sparked. They beat us twice. Oh, we got four in a row lost in regulation. Uh, win over St. Louis. All right. You know, if we're going to win against teams, I'd rather win against teams that are clearly playoff bound. Okay, so we are 28, 36, and 8. The good news is that that regulation loss counter is closing in on 40. The bad news is two more wins, two more uh, two more overtime losses, and we are at 70 points. So how many is that that we need? Uh, hang on, hang on. Let me do a little math here. Four, six, six points, right? We need six points to get to 70, something like that. Uh, Ten games remaining, not good. So three, yeah, that would take us there, three wins. 
Okay, boys, so hopefully we can have this extended losing streak. Let's take a look at the standings. We also need some luck from uh, the other teams around the league. If they can win some games, that would be great as well. This team is so freaking bad. How the hell are we winning games? We should be on a uh, losing streak since the trade deadline. All right, so let me just go again. Entire league. We were at 8th when I uh, before I made the trades. Okay, let's see if that's improved at all. So this is 11th, uh, 10th, 9th. Eighth, all right, so we moved up. Seventh, okay. Sixth, fifth, fourth. All right, so we got in the uh, the fourth overall pick the way it sits right now. Islanders, uh, the Canucks, the Hurricanes, and the Avalanche. Now, let's see. So I, I, what did I say? I said if we're below 70, it should be the third or fourth overall pick. Now, I don't think, unless the Islanders start winning games, I don't think they're going to pass us. Vancouver, same thing. Unless they start winning games, there's still 10 games remaining. Uh, 20 possible points, but they're not going to go on a 10-0 streak. Carolina, though, that's one. If they can pass us, I'll settle for a bottom three. That would really help out our chances, and we wouldn't drop any further than, what, sixth? Hell yeah, man. Come on, come on. We can do this. We can do this. And let's see what, what the teams are trending in. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Uh, last 10. All right, the Islanders 5-5-0. Five, five oh, Vancouver 4-5-1. And one Carolina five four and one two seven and one for us. Winnipeg went seven three and oh that's huge for us. Boston is trending down though. Come on, we have to lose. We have I want I want eight regulation losses here in the last ten games. All right, and Edmonton is up two games first. Come on, baby, Connor McJesus, just go to town on us. We got a shitty defensive core. We got no depth. Just to score fifteen goals on us, I don't care. So we're gonna go one game at a time here because this is this is the difference between Nolan Patrick, Nico Hiche, and Timothy Liljegren right here, boys. And it's a five. Two loss in regulation to Edmonton. Huge. Huge. All right, come on. Get to 40. Get to 40. John Mitchell, uh, assistant coach, replaced player. Um, yeah, let's keep on going here. So, second game against Edmonton in Edmonton. Come on. Don't win. Don't win. Don't win. Don't win. Yes, baby. All right. So, two regulation losses right there. We have eight games remaining. Come on. Keep her up. Uh, the Calgary Flames are actually fighting for a playoff position with a record like that. So, I mean, They've got to take it. They've got to take it. We don't need to play spoiler. Just let them score. I should probably just sit Picard, but I, I, he could grow. The guys who can grow, I don't want to sit. Forwards for six weeks in the QMJHL. Calgary Flames. Let's see. Let's see. Yes. Okay, that's a shootout loss, though. That's a point. Remember, at this at this time of the year, a point could mean the difference between the third and fourth overall pick. So I don't like that. Uh, we can afford to... Five more points before 70. Five more points before 70. Washington Capitals. Let's see. 47, 23, and 5. Come on now, boys. Come on now. You can't beat the Capitals. Shootout loss. What are you guys doing? Stop pushing it to overtime. Fucking Washington. You couldn't score on us. All right. So two more wins and we're at 70, boys. How many games left? Six more. Oh, God dang it, man. This is not good. St. Louis Blues. Come on. Beat us, St. Louis. If we go on some sort of point streak now, we got points in last... Four or five games. It's going to be ridiculous. Uh, continue. Let's see. St. Louis. There you go. Regulation loss. Fantastic. Minnesota's a stud team. You know you want that President's Trophy, Minnesota. Take us to town. Just score goals. <sighs> Let's see. Let's see. If I'm going to have to reassess the standings again. If we're the last four games of the season, there's another loss. Chicago, yeah, I'll just I'll just go another one. I'll go another one. Let's see. Chicago lose, lose, lose. Yes, another regulation loss. Okay, so we're above the 40. Uh, we only have three games left. If we win all three, we will get to 72 points. So we are in range of what I wanted. Now let's take a look at those standings again, boys. This is the beginning of the dynasty for the Colorado Avalanche, right here, okay? Every team that passes us, we're that much further on the accelerated rebuild because of the quality we're gonna get in this draft. So let's see, in entire league. Let's see where we sit again. Okay, so uh, 20 is the 11. So 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. All right, Carolina passed us. Three Islanders passed us. Two. Oh my God, we got the second. Okay, so Vancouver, we're only one point. The games are the same. Yeah, we cannot win. We cannot win. I'm taking Picard out. I'm taking Picard out right now. Yeah, got to do it. Vancouver Canucks uh, down at 62 points. I don't think they can pass us. Uh, two, they can technically if they win all three, they could. Regulation, and they have more regulation uh, plus overtime wins if they tie us. Okay, we gotta lose all three. We gotta lose all three games. Picard, you're coming out. He's already started enough games this season. If I sit him, I don't think it'll be a big, uh, big deal. Uh, how do I do this? Let me turn on league settings. Let me turn on automated goalie rotate, or uh, let me turn it off. I should say. Can you guys remind me to turn that back on? 
Uh, by the time uh, we start up again, because I'll forget, auto goalie rotations, I'm going to turn that sucker off, and then I'm going to start the backup in the net. It was like 66 overall. Watch him go on a three-game winning streak. Please, please, please. You know, I don't even need the first. That second will be perfect, because then we're guaranteed in the top five. We're guaranteed in the top five, and we'll get a stud in the top five. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Uh, hang on a second. No, no, no. Not starting. Not uh, offense. There you go. Picard. Atia Kialio. All right. 66 overall. So he's going to start the remaining games of the regular season because I turned off automated goalie rotations. This team is absolutely garbage. Look at that. Look at those stats. 77, 77, 68. Let's go. Come on. We cannot win. The, the, the Minnesota Wild, they got a great record. They're a good team. The Dallas Stars, they're not a good team. But then the St. Louis Blues, come on. Just lose to Minnesota and uh, St. Louis. I'll take one win. Do not have more than two points, please. Saint, uh, Minnesota, please, Minnesota, beat us. Please, Minnesota, beat us. Please beat us. Please. Yes, 7 to 1. 7 to 1. Solid call. All right, so we have officially uh, not gone past the 70 uh, point mark, okay? Now, Landis Gog's morale just dropped. That's not good. If it goes shit, I can't have that happen. Uh, assistant coach replaces player. There you go. All right, so the Dallas Stars, they just won their last game. Come on. This is, this is huge. Please lose. Please lose. Please lose. Please lose. Please lose. Fucking hell. Dallas is the worst team in the NHL. How do we beat them 3-1? to one? Holy crap. Okay, so last game of the season. Let me just take a look at the stats again, boys. I know. Remember, if Vancouver won all three and we won one, we would have ended up with the same amount of points, which would put us in last place. So let me just take a look at this. I got to know. I've got to know. Uh, Central Division... Entire league. All right. So at least the tank went well. We didn't uh, win games after the trade deadline. Vancouver, 63 points. No, they're not doing it. Vancouver was the worst team in the NHL. This oh, the Islanders. That win put us one point ahead of the Islanders. Fuck. All right. Well, it doesn't matter if we catch the Carolina Hurricanes because... Uh, the regulation plus overtime wins is in their favor. But the Islanders pass. Us. See what I mean, boys? Those overtime losses and that win right there. It's the difference between like a second and third overall pick. All right. Come on, boys. Why do we have to win against Dallas? Fucking Dallas, you idiots. Oh, all right. Last game, please. I'll take this. I'll take the third. I'll take the third. I'll settle for the third. Simulate. Please lose against St. Louis. Please lose against St. Louis. Please lose against St. Louis. Okay. That's a 5 nothing loss. Okay. Okay. So if the Islanders, they got a win there in the last game, we might be in a good position. Rese uh, regular season has ended. Let's just finish it up. Let's see. Yeah, sim to the draft. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, the standings, the player stats, all that good stuff. We're not going to do the NHL entry draft in this video, but we will show you the lottery, and I'll show you who's available in the draft and all that good stuff. So entire league, boys. Let's see this, okay? Ba -ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's see. Colorado Avalanche. Yeah, baby! The Islanders, they got a point in their last game, and their regulation plus overtime wins means that they are third and we are second. We got the second best uh, odd at acquiring the first overall pick, boys. And if three teams below us pass us, then that will push us back to fifth, with the, which is not bad, okay? We got the top five pick. We guaranteed ourselves that top five pick. So the tank was on, and it worked out for us. Uh, you know what? I should just watch. Let's see how my rosters, uh, my edited rosters worked out here in the uh, in the regular season. So San Jose, top of the Pacific. The Edmonton Oilers, they turned it on late. The LA Kings and the Anaheim Ducks. Who missed out? The Flames, the Coyotes, and the Canucks. I think that's pretty realistic. Central Division, St. Louis Blues, Chicago Blackhawks, Minnesota Wild, and the Nashville Predators. Uh, Dallas missed out. The Winnipeg Jets missed out. And Colorado Avalanche missed out. Pretty uh, realistic rosters right there, I'd say. Atlantic Division, Montreal, Tampa Bay. And remember, Tampa Bay with Matt Duchesne now. Powerhouse. Uh, Buffalo Sabres and the Florida Panthers. Uh, Toronto Maple Leafs fell off. Detroit fell off. Ottawa and Boston. Okay, Atlantic's a little bit weird. And the Metropolitan Division, Pittsburgh, uh, the Capitals, the Rangers, and the Jackets. Yeah, I mean, those rosters, boys, they work out pretty well for the simulation, I gotta say. Now we'll take a look at how it worked out for the individual stats. See if it's a little bit too much, if it's not enough. If we had a 50 goal, man, if we had a point per game, man. First, we'll take a look at what we did. So, you know how I asked you guys to... Uh, track the stats after the trade we got nathan mckinnon i think he had 20 something goals now he's up to a 30 goal score so that's great 70 points uh gabriel landisco i don't know if he got another goal playing on that uh playing with jonathan drew in drew in had like maybe five goals something like that in the remaining 20 games 61 points so landy yeah i, I drew in and mckinnon are gonna work magic together landy no he's, he's got it <gasps> look at that landis got grew to 88 look at that look at that oh it's genius so that's a little bit extra trade value now oh that's 
big boys. Sebastian Aho, 42 points, 20 goals. Rantanen, 41 points, 15 goals. Okay, not too shabby. Uh, we'll take a look at defensemen, even though it really doesn't matter. Eric Johnson with 31 points. Tyson Berry with 30. And what about goaltenders? Picard. Uh, Picard, let's see. Save percentage, 0.905. Uh, it was looking better. Maybe he grows in the offseason. Maybe he doesn't. Who knows? Uh, we can always acquire a goaltender for the future. we got years before we uh, have to figure that out. Oh, I keep on backing out before I take a look at everything. Now that we've taken a look at the Colorado Avalanche roster, let's take a look at the stats around the NHL. Hang on a second. There you go. Entire league forward. So the, the best point producer in the NHL this year, Sidney Crosby with 96 points. Second place goes to Connor McDavid with 95. Phil Kessel with 92. You know he's playing alongside of uh, Sid the Kid. Oh, they're both 97 overall. Nice. Ovechkin with 88. Leon Dreisaitl, 88. John Tavares, Tarasenko. All right, so there are your point producers. What about goal? scorers let's see this alexander ovechkin with 56 goals 32 assists uh steven stamkos 47 john tavares 46 okay so we had a 50 goal scorer in there and crosby had 38 could have had a little bit more patrick line with 34 uh let's see defenseman who had the most goals as a defenseman shea weber with 24 with montreal oh my god shea weber's point per game <laughs> he might be a little bit too good boys but then again, the Montreal Canadiens, if you don't make them good, they simulate horribly for some reason. Eric Carlson with uh, 80. Duncan Keith with 73. Brent Burns with 69. And uh, what about uh, goaltenders? Who's the best goalie in the NHL this year? Save percentage-wise. Uh, Carey Price? Hang on, hang on. You know what? Before I look at goalies, I think that was the glitch last time. Can I look at rookie skaters? Let's see. Uh, yeah, I can look at rookies. I don't know why it didn't pop up when I was showing you guys my custom roster. I think it was because I selected a goalie stat and it doesn't apply then. But uh, your leading point man for the Calder for the rookies, Patrick Laine, 71 points, 34 goals. Nylander in second, Marner in third, and Austin Matthews in fourth. Okay, makes sense. We got Aho and Rantanen down there, not too shabby. And uh, now I'll take a look at the goaltenders because we had it on uh, points. And I can still pa uh, come back from points now. Yeah, there you go. Hang on a second. I think Carey Price, best save percentage with uh, the combination of games played. This Domingue guy, but uh, he only started how many games? Yeah, games played 17. Carey Price, best goaltender save percentage, 68 games played. Bobrovsky was second. Holpe was third. Devin Dubnik was fourth. Pretty good for me. Henrik Lundqvist was fifth. Okay, not too bad. So, boys, let me know what you think about the uh, the simulation with my rosters. If I had to point out one thing, I think Shea Weber's getting a little bit too many points. But um, the way the teams simulate, I like it, man. I do. Uh, so that's all that taken care of. We'll just uh, quick, uh, quickly take a quick look. I can't even talk. Take a quick look at the um, the playoff tree. Chicago versus Minnesota again. St. Louis versus Nashville. Edmonton versus L.A. San Jose versus Anaheim. Washington versus New York. Pittsburgh versus the Columbus Blue Jackets. Tampa versus Buffalo. And the Montreal Canadiens versus the Florida Panthers. So that is all of that taken care of. Now it is time to just simulate up into the NHL entry draft. We're going to take a look at the lottery and see what we have. Oh, I hope we get lucky, man. I hope the hockey gods are smiling upon us. I swear, if they give some team at like 10th overall, the first overall, I'm going to be pissed. I better have number one or number two. Uh, number three is not bad either. I better not be back at four or five. It's better, it better give it to us. Okay, so, oh, you know what? Stop the simulation. I should be following the uh, the uh, AHL squad. Yeah, there you go. All right, so let's follow the San Antonio Rampage through their playoff run, boys. Remember, Tyson Jost, you guys were saying? Not Jost, Tyson Jost. Uh, JT Confer and Miguel Grigorenko playing down there. Let's see how they perform. They're up 2-1 in the series. Oh, 2-2. Two, two. Come on. Oh, my God. They were up 2-0 in the series, and they allow a three-game comeback. Well, that's going to hurt their uh, ability to grow. Not not good boys not good all right so we'll just get this simulating done uh you know what let's jump ahead i don't want to waste any more time this video has been going on quite quite a while hang on all right boys so the year one stanley cup champions the washington capitals they finally did it alexander ovechkin gets the hoist lord stanley cup congratulations Ovi. he actually got it done so we'll take a look at all those stats in a second uh, i didn't want to uh, continue the simulation because the lottery and the retirements are going to pop up any second there but how about alexander ovechkin 50 goal season he's going to win another uh maurice Richard and then oh fuck oh come on man the Dallas Stars 
Stars, they get the first overall pick. The Winnipeg Jets, the second overall pick. Vancouver Canucks, the third overall pick. And we drop down to fourth, boys. So we had second, and we got fourth. So the game screwed us. Nolan Patrick, Nico Hiche, Timothy Liljegren, they might not be a part of the Colorado Avalanche franchise. Fuck, man. Dallas and Winnipeg, Vancouver. Dallas, Winnipeg, Vancouver. I, I, I think Dallas especially, weren't they above 500? That's some bullshit right there. Hang on a second. Dallas, Vancouver, and Winnipeg. I think, hang on a second. Vancouver was the crap one. Where did Winnipeg and Dallas finish? This is ridiculous. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Entire league. All right, so we got down here. Let's see, non-playoff teams. Calgary, Vancouver, uh, not, not Vancouver. Dallas, are you kidding me? Dallas was the 19th team in the NHL, and they ended up taking the first overall pick. Oh, and where was Winnipeg? Winnipeg was down there at 6th. Oh, good God. So Vancouver moved back up 1. I moved back up 1 or 2. I'm back down to 4th, right, because Winnipeg and freaking Dallas jumped to 1 and 2. This stupid-ass lottery. you telling me I should have just tried to go for the playoff and just missed it and ended up getting the first overall pick anyways? Ah, I did a good job with the freaking, uh, uh, with the freaking, uh, the tank boys, but the game did not smile upon me. So let's simulate up to the NHL entry draft and we are here. Oh my God. That's absolutely garbage. That's straight garbage. Uh, all right. So let's take a look at the scouting report. Even if can, can you even, yeah, you can, here we go. Uh, oh, no, you can't. You can't even look at the scouting report before the NHL entry draft. All right, boys. Well, I'm not going to be able to show you who's in the upcoming NHL entry draft. I have to actually go into the draft before I do that, and I don't want to do that because... Um because then I won't be able to back out and we actually have to select a player. I don't want that to happen. I want you guys to chime in. So we have the fourth overall pick. Uh, some prospects that are there are uh, Nolan Patrick, Nico Hiche, Timothy Liljegren, uh, uh, Maxime Komtos is a left winger, Gabriel Velarde. There's another center in there that we might be able to snag up. So you're going to get somebody with elite potential, but you're not going to get Nico Hiche or Nolan Patrick at number four. You're just not. Unless they somehow fall back, but I don't see that happening. So boys, what do we we do Gabriel Landeskog grew to 88 do we move up in the draft do we try to go from fifth up to third or something we could also do that do we try to acquire the fourth overall pick so that we have two I don't know man a lot of different options that we can have we tanked year one ended up uh, ending up with a fourth overall pick we have Jonathan Drew in now so you know it's not a horrible foundation to start building on it just would have been so nice with that oh with that first or second overall pick but boys got to deal with it so let me know what you think and I will see you in the next video when we start up the year one NHL entry draft be sure to check out our website 2bcsports.com where the hockey talk continues find myself and others in the live interactive chat or dive into the active forums to talk about sports and gaming you can also find us on Twitch where the live streams come to life. Yeah!